Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar as we are continuing to see heavy snow in some northern areas but heavy rain further southwards. That is going to continue over the next few days as we'll see from the latest weather warnings as we do have snow and ice warnings still issued for northern areas and rain warnings issued further southwards as we are still going to see lots of precipitation around. We'll then have a look at the latest from the UKV as that gets us out into the early part of next week as it is going to continue to remain really quite unsettled with lots of areas of precipitation around but as we progress over the next few days more and more of that will turn to rain as we see some slightly milder air getting caught up in the area of low pressure. And then we'll have a look at the latest on the longer range as we do progress into the, part, the last few weeks of meteorological winter. As we are continuing to see signs, we could see some blocking returning to the north, but again, nothing too definitive. If it did come off, looking likely to perhaps be a Scandinavian high, but we're seeing lots of chopping and changing from the models. Of course, we've got a sudden stratospheric warming that's likely to happen. We'll have a video out on that over the course of the next few days, and that could so spice things up into the second half of the month into early March as well. So we'll update that in the second half of the video. So do remember if you enjoy my videos which you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. And you can see at the moment on the latest from the live radar we've got two areas of interest. We've got this area in the north where we've got some rain, sleet and some heavy snow and this was the initial weather front that arrived earlier today and did give the heavy rain in the south and then heavy snow further northwards. And we've got this second area of rain moving in which is quite a bit more, uh, quite a bit heavier and more sustained further southwards. This area further northwards is now starting to sort of become more patchy as it progresses northwards, of course losing some of its intensity as it moves into that colder air. We can still see some heavy snow in places, and we've seen a good 5-10 centimetres in some of those areas, especially where we saw amber warnings towards North Wales and parts of the higher ground of Northern England. Towards low-lying areas, from what I've seen, it's been very hit and miss. Some areas are only maybe 50 to 100 metres of elevation, it's in a few centimetres of snow, other areas slightly higher than that, I've seen very little. So it's been very, very marginal, but it has kind of played out as expected. Heavier snow, most prolonged snow over higher ground, still continuing at the moment. So it's low-lying areas, perhaps a mix with some snow during the day, but now mostly turning back towards a wintry mix or rain. Now the cold air is still embedded in Scotland, so we are still expecting most of this precipitation to be snow to any moderate to higher ground in Scotland for the next 24 hours or snow. But across parts of Northern Ireland and Northern England, when this secondary weather front moves in, we are expecting the majority of the precipitation to turn back to rain. So if you have got snow at the moment, if you are uh, listening to this uh, or watching this on Thursday evening, then to... Uh, do go out and enjoy the snow, looking at the snow over the next few hours as it is likely to get washed away as we head into Friday. Now, if you look at the latest temperatures, you can see big, big contrast. Still very cold and temperatures close to freezing or below freezing further northwards where that cold air is still pretty embedded, but it is slowly rising over the coming hours. And then this secondary weather front, there's actually got some very mild air in. Now remember, further southwards, earlier today, was still quite cold, only three or four degrees in London, for example, but just not quite cold enough for snow. Now those temperatures are rising, perhaps getting into double digits again tomorrow, and it is going to mean those temperatures are going to rise further north as well. So over to snow today, might be six or seven degrees tomorrow, where those temperatures do rise pretty rapidly as that precipitation band moves in. You can see the, sort of the division between very cold air and mild air across sort of the south midlands here now. And it will be progressing northwards pretty quickly over the coming hours. Now, if you put on the past 24 hours snowfall, we'll be able to see where we've seen the most snow over uh, the course of today. Again, that area towards northern England, between sort of Liverpool, Manchester, up towards the higher ground, towards Leeds and Sheffield. This region here, Peak District into the Pennines, we've seen quite a lot of snow. And you see where the highest ground is, 10 to uh, 20 centimetres observed here. Very patchy, those very high snow totals, because that is where we've seen the highest ground. Uh, and then, of course, northern Wales as well. So very much an elevation event. This low-lying areas, not seeing much at all. Maybe a bit of accumulating snow around sort of moderate elevation, highest ground, seeing a quite a major snow event uh, in these areas. 
You can see parts of the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland see quite a bit of snow as well. Again, mainly over the higher ground, but it does look like quite widespread here, so more low-lying, yeah, but it will be uh, turning more to rain over the coming hours. We are expecting to see more snow across Scotland as well, as the precipitation bands do move northwards and the cold air does hang on. Now, if you do look at the latest weather warnings, you can see the amber warnings have now expired. We've still got a rain warning issued further southwards, and it does expire at 6 a.m. tomorrow. So we're still going to see some very heavy rain moving in, tens of millimetres possible. I said this in yesterday's video, if that cold air was a bit more embedded and was pushed further south, was a bit more blocking, we could see 10, 20 centimetres of snow from this sort of event in the south. But instead, we're seeing lots of cold rain. So it does expire tomorrow, and you can see it is medium likelihood and lower impact. If we move further north, we still have this snow warning issue further north, and again, it expires at 6 a.m. Again, most areas here now starting to see rain. Do expect to see still see snow into the early hours of the morning over the highest ground, but it will, as I said, progressively, uh, well, the freezing level will progressively rise over the coming hours. Uh, again, if we do look at the further details, we're looking at a low likelihood and medium impact. Uh, the likelihood is now down, and that's why the amber warnings have expired. Again, we're looking at sort of a few centimetres of snow over low-lying areas, but that is mostly now gone. That's probably uh, more addressing the early time in this warning, maybe still 5 to 10 centimetres or more over the highest ground. The snow interest does move further northwards for Northern Ireland. This warning expires again at 6 a.m., uh, and again... Uh, we are still expecting to see some snow over the higher ground, but again, low-lying areas will start to wane. But then for parts of Scotland, you can see this does go to 3 p.m. tomorrow. As I said, that cold air is still in the north, so still snow here. And it comes from midday today until 3 p.m. tomorrow. Again, accumulation should be highest over 300 metres, but 1 to 3 centimetres could be expected uh, in some low-lying areas, maybe 8 to 10 centimetres in the highest ground there. And then as we head into Friday, still got that snow and ice warnings issued. And then we've got this new warning issued for parts of northern Scotland, uh, sort of the central belt northwards from 3 p.m. till 6 p.m. So you can see the snow risk is just shifting slowly northwards. Eventually, it will completely clear Scotland by the end of the weekend. But here from 6 p.m., uh, from 3 p.m. tomorrow until 6 p.m. on Saturday, again, we're looking at snow and ice. Again, a few centimetres as possible over the highest ground, 10 to 20 centimetres, where we still see that cold air hanging on. But you can see during Saturday, Milder conditions will follow from the south with sleet and snow turning back to rain. And you see that warning still in force into Saturday. Now, if you look at the latest UKV, you can see that precipitation moving northwards at the moment. It's actually a little bit more extensive still, the snow, than uh, the models are or at least then the UKV is making it out to be, but you can see slowly those pinks fade through the early hours of Friday, more turning to blue, especially through northern England, but still some snow across Scotland into tomorrow afternoon. Elsewhere, lots of heavy showers continuing to push in, and it'll continue to be pretty unsettled through the rest of Friday, and then into Saturday, still quite a bit of rain around, further north than snow in places, but then you can see the centre of the line moves through, and that means lots of heavy, maybe even some thundery showers developing there, squally showers in places as well. As we progress through the rest of Sunday, we do see this area of precipitation across in the North Sea. We thought perhaps a few days ago that could come inland, but the latest UKV has it out in the North Sea. That would uh, mean that those eastern areas are not going to see a particularly horrible day on Sunday. Uh, then was looking like a possibility a few days ago but still showers around in places and then as we head into early part of next week we see the winds opening up to more of a northwesterly so cooler air comes back in but still nothing too crazy and then again more lows further south was trying to push in giving again more heavier rain air mass is going to be all over the place over the coming days you see cold air still in place in the north at the moment it's going to be replaced by slightly milder air but we're never going to go really mild it's going to stay relatively chilly around average hovering above and slightly below over the next five days or so now if you look at the two meters temperatures you can see we're through the rest of this evening still huge temperature contrast especially further northwards but as we head into tomorrow those temperature contrasts slowly drift further further northwards you can see areas that are below freezing today six seven eight nine degrees through tomorrow afternoon scotland still bitterly cold though into Saturday, temperatures start to get well above average in the south, 10 to 12 degrees, still very cold in the north. And then as we head into Sunday, more areas are in and around average again, that sort of 5 to 8 degree mark. And the same as we head into Monday, could be a bit of a frost in places, and again, 6 to 8 degrees. And that continues into Tuesday, maybe slightly milder in the southwest, as we see another wedge of mild air move in. Now, if you have a look at the latest on the longer range, see what is in store for the rest of February. Of course, there's been a lot of interest 
in a proper prolonged spell, a cold spell, not just a few days like we're seeing right now. And it's continued to stay in the longer range, but never made its way into sort of day 10. And that is continuing. If we do look at the latest GFS, you can see low pressure continue to mill around. Eventually, we see high pressure trying to get up towards Scandinavia, trying to get up towards Greenland, but it never really takes off. Right here, we do see a bit of a Scandinavian high, do see a little bit of an easterly wind developing, but again, nothing too major. That tropospheric polar vortex is still too strong. Again, we shouldn't really expect a strong tropospheric polar vortex considering we're seeing a sudden stratospheric warming pretty imminently. So it could change very quickly, but the GFS here hints at some blocking, but getting a bit of a Scandinavian high going, but then really not really taking off at all and more for just a flat westy flow developing. Now, if you compare to the GM, uh, you can see it disagrees in terms of it does build high pressure up towards Scandinavia and does dominate high pressure with us. Um, and you can see it's starting to try and develop a bit of a northeasterly. It's not particularly cold by this point, but it is perhaps turning into a more interesting pattern. So you can see that's day 10. Again, big disagreement between the models. GFS would be westerly, very mild. The GM, perhaps milder upper air temperatures, but the surface would be chilly with an inversion and perhaps could go quite a bit colder in the longer range as we do start to see that blocking progress further northwards. If we do compare to the ECM low F, which is just coming out, so I haven't actually looked at the last couple of days of this. Again, you can see low pressure continues to dominate over the coming days. Into next week, high pressure returns and it builds northwards. I mean, you see quite a big block developing and perhaps a route to cold or very cold conditions. Look at this big wedge of very cold air to our northeast trying to head our way. Again, a very interesting signs there from the ECM Louis F, but this has not got a lot of support from the GFS or the GM. We can't really say anything more than the models are a little bit, as I said, all over the place. Now, if you finish by looking at the ensembles, you can see that there isn't any strong consensus. Next sort of five, six days, London's going to be a little bit mild initially before turning our average to below average. But then, as we progress into next week, around that day 7 to day 14 range, again, we're generally hovering around average. Maybe slightly above average from this latest set of ensemble members, but it's not really too significant. It's a pretty trivial amount. Generally, though, above and below, nothing bitterly cold, but a few colder runs. Nothing very mild, but again, a few milder runs. And you can see, even though there is a relatively strong high-pressure signal from the operational runs, precipitation is still fairly moderate, which gives us the indication that the uh, models can't, uh, the ensemble, sorry, can't agree on the upper air temperatures and they can't even agree on the overall pressure pattern either. There definitely is a trend of higher pressure in the long term. You see this from quite a definitive uptick. But again, it's not definitive in the precipitation, which implies low pressure is never going to be too far away. So it's a very muddled picture in the long range, but definitely a real possibility of a Scandinavian high developing. That's at least what the long range is showing. And we're seeing hints of it on some of these uh, shorter range operational runs. So we'll just have to see what happens with that. If we do look at the latest ECM, the F ensembles, the midnight run, very similar. Again, uh, above average at the moment, a little bit below average for a few days early next week, and then generally average to slightly above average. Less of a colder signal here, definitely in the longer range, and perhaps slightly lower precipitation signal for the number of ensemble members, so perhaps slightly milder, higher pressure building. So it could be a route to cold weather in the extremely long range, in the next week or two. Unfortunately, if you are looking for something quite a bit colder, not showing anything majorly at the moment. Of course, the one caveat we have to take is the ECMBF operation run, we've just seen it, is rooting towards colder conditions. If we do could just briefly go back to it, you can see here at day 10, it's very blocked, turning very cold in the longer range, but actually at day 10, it's not particularly cold at all. So it's the possibility we're seeing a lot of that within these models. But again, I can't say anything definitively until we get some actual uh, consistency in the ensemble forecast and in the operational runs. So unfortunately, it's a little bit of a muddled uh, sort of pattern. I can't say exactly what will happen. All I can say is the next sort of week or so, we're looking generally around average, relatively unsettled in the short range, uh, perhaps even exceptionally unsettled in places with lots of rain. Uh, hopefully, though, longer range definitely looks high pressure, could return, just don't know what capacity, whether it's over the top of us, encouraging a milder westerly flow, uh, pushing to our north, encouraging cooler, but nothing exceptionally cold, or if it does turn into a proper northern block, scanty even high, developing something major towards the end of the month. We don't know. We will just have to wait and see. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.